Hi, I'm Geert van Geele and I want to teach you some quick tuning fixes for your recorders. This video is part of a series that accompanied the iBook Thoughts on the Recorder, which is available through my webshop kattenberg.net and you can find the link in the description. I've also included a clickable link at the end of this video if you want to learn more about it. First of all, a recorder is never perfectly in tune. It is up to the player to correct any minor issues that our any given instrument might have. Every one of you knows that the tuning can be influenced by both the amount of breath pressure and the fingerings. If you would like to find out more about how to work with the so-called shadings, which are partially covered finger holes, or how to work with breath pressure, I refer to my iBook Thoughts on the Recorder, where I describe in great detail the workings of these techniques. If you find that your recorder has a specific tuning issue, you might be able to fix it with a simple step. Other issues may be more complex, and given that every finger hole influences other notes as well, it can be too daunting to cope with this. It often is for me. But let's concentrate on a couple of the easy fixable situations. The easiest fix are the octaves. If you find that your octaves are too wide, which by the way, is the most common tuning flaw on the recorders, you can very easily experiment by putting a strip of paper at the top of the middle joint. This strip would be about an inch or two centimeters wide. The length can differ depending on the tuning flaw. You could start with a length of about eight inches or about 20 centimeters and take it from there. Roll the strip in the tube and wet it slightly so that it will stick better to the bore of the recorder. Now, how do you find out if your issue is corrected? Of course, you could play against the tuner and check it this way. In my experience, it's too easy to fool yourself because you will inadvertently compensate your breath pressure. I think it's much better to have a sounding reference than a visual one. For that sake, a well-tuned keyboard is preferable. In a pinch, you can also refer to a sustained note that your tuner provides. By playing the sustained note and checking other notes in relation to this, you will get a better idea of its own. A keyboard has the added advantage that you can check with some chords as well. Play also a couple of slow melodies that you know very well in order to really check if everything sounds right. If you rely on the tuner, realize that you can consider your instrument to be in tune when all of the notes are well within a range of 20 cents when checked. 20 cents is a range that's perfectly adjustable with the breath pressure alone. If you are convinced that you are in a better place with the paper strip and the bore, you may want to swap the strip with beeswax. Beeswax will result in a better sound and you won't have the bother of dealing with the paper strips. Let me show you how to apply the wax. First, you want to make sure that the part of the bore where you want to apply the wax is free of any oil residue. For this, it's a good idea to use the washing soda solution on a cotton swab. Next, you want to soften some beeswax between your fingers. In order to accommodate this, you may do this over a candle but keep a safe distance from the flame. Roll the wax into inch long bits, which you then press against the bore. Repeat this procedure all around the bore. Space the wax bits from one another. Now you can melt these wax bits with a needle, which you heat over the candle flame until red hot. Alternatively, you can also use a thin knife for this. With a needle or knife, you can melt the wax until you get a smooth, uniform surface in the bore. You will need to repeat the heating procedure quite a lot before reaching a satisfying result. To finish the job, you can roll a pencil over the wax surface in order to smooth the wax out further, or to remove some wax in case you've applied too much of it. It's best to use a pencil with edges for this, not a round one. Another tuning problem you can easily fix are the notes from the middle register F, 
F sharp G on an alto. Let me go over the finger holes which determine each of these notes. The pitch of F is being influenced by the first and the third finger hole. Be careful if you plan to change the third hole since this is going to have an influence as well on the D in both octaves and to a lesser extent to the middle G. So if you can, stick only to changing the first finger hole for tuning the F. This first finger hole also determines the pitch of the G, but at the same time the thumb hole has more influence on the pitch of G. The thumb hole now also very much determines the F sharp. By altering these finger holes you will be able to strike a good balance for these notes. When you are trying out things, it's a good idea to work with some cello tape before you decide to make some finger holes smaller. When you've decided on which finger hole needs to be filled, you can use the same technique as for the octaves, only make the rolled wax bits a lot smaller. If you need to enlarge the hole, you can either use a thin red tail file, you can use a file for sharpening chainsaws for this, or otherwise a knife with a bent tip which is known as a linoleum knife. Try not to enlarge the visible size of the hole, but rather enlarge it by undercutting the hole. This is the technique which recorder builders use for tuning handmade instruments. If you are feeling brave enough to tune your instrument more than these simple procedures, remember to always check all the notes that are being influenced by every finger hole. A general rule to keep in mind is that if you alter the bottom part of a hole, this will have more influence on the upper octave. If you alter the top part of a hole, it will influence more the bottom register. Recorder builder Adrian Brown talks more in depth about this in his book A Recorder Workshop. I'll put a link for this in the description. Finally, I would like to share an easy trick for lowering the overall pitch of a recorder far beyond what you would normally achieve by pulling out the head joint. Everyone knows that by pulling out the head joint the overall pitch can be regulated within a limited range. If you pull out more than a couple millimeters, the overall tuning becomes unstable. The trick to overcome this is by putting some plasticine over the labium. The idea is to extend the three vertical walls around the labium. You can do this really properly by first putting a blob of plasticine around the labium and then cutting away the overhanging plasticine with a sharp knife. Be careful though that you don't cut away any wood. When in a hurry, you can revert to rolling some plasticine and placing this over the labium in a way that the corners of the labium are cut off. This does the job in a pinch, although the sound quality will be less good than if you extend the walls. Be aware that some sound degradation will occur. The recorder will sound a bit grainier than before. The good news is that this procedure has no influence on the relative tuning of the recorder. Only the overall pitch is being affected. And of course, if you take away the plasticine, everything is back to normal. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. This was the last video related to the first chapter of my iBook Thoughts on the Recorder. Keep browsing my channel for other videos that may interest you and feel free to subscribe. If you would like more in-depth information on the treatment of your recorders, with some added personal stories taken from my life on stage and in the classroom, have a look at my iBook Thoughts on the Recorder, which is available through my webshop kettenberg.net. You can also watch an introductory video of this book by clicking here. The next video is the first video related to the second chapter of the book. I will talk about recorder technique, starting from the pure basics and building up to the most advanced techniques. See you next time and have a great day!